Imagine two women, both shaped by the entertainment industry, both with powerful stories of struggle and success. Yet, when it comes to politics, their path diverged dramatically. One speaks about the occlusion of a party that she thought was once racist. Realize Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. The other one, as she puts, popping it for Kamala. <laughs> I was it from the in today's episode, we're diving into the uncomfortable comparison between Amber Rose's speech at the RNC and Megan Thee Stallion's performance at Kamala Harris rally. This isn't just about political choices. This is a mirror that we have to hold up to the culture to examine what these moments say about us. This is the uncomfortable comparison between Amber Rose and Megan Thee Stallion. What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome or welcome back to the Broken Traditions Podcast with your host, Laron, aka Real Rap Ron. In this week's episode, we're going to have an uncomfortable comparison about the appearances of Megan Thee Stallion at Kamala Harris rally in Atlanta and Amber Rose's speech at the Republican National Convention for Donald Trump. I want, I want to say this, right? This is the first thing I said when I seen this and I seen the comparisons. The Republican National Convention is not the same stage as a rally for a presidential candidate, right? So I, I kind of put that out there in real time on social media when people were comparing it. For whatever reason, right? People were comparing Amber Rose to Megan Thee Stallion after Megan Thee Stallion performed at Kamala Harris rally. And I get it, right? If you're a Megan Thee Stallion fan, you're going to try to defend your fandom for Megan Thee Stallion as you see fit, right? Or if you're somebody who support Kamala Harris for whatever reason, you want to support that presidential candidate, have you see fit. I know how people are. I know how the blind support works, how people just fall into those categories of let me support this person no matter what. Right. So I get it. I get why you made the comparisons. But since you made the comparisons, since uh, people operate in systems of what about isms instead of really facing on the issue of the disrespect of the image that there was put out there for a presidential candidate, you'd rather deal with the whataboutism. So I get it. I understand it. I know the operating system. I know y'all for a long time. I know who I'm speaking to, right? So I get it. Got to have this conversation, this comparison, because y'all brought it up as a comparison. And since y'all brought it up as a comparison, I want to have the conversation. But before we show the evidence of the comparisons and get into this episode, here on Broken Traditions, we are about breaking away from traditions of toxic black culture. If you went to that kind of content, you have the kind of mindset join the movement and by joining the movement you can subscribe to the youtube you can become a channel member on the youtube or a channel member of the patreon those memberships i greatly appreciate everybody who's a member those memberships help keep broken traditions independent definitely greatly appreciate you guys and i greatly i greatly appreciate anybody who decides or thinking about becoming a member right membership starts at 4.99 if you want to join the patreon memberships go higher because there's different levels of gifts that you get with different memberships right so for example you can get this hoodie it says wins and lessons on the back of the hoodie it says there's no losses there's only lessons right so if you like that kind of merch you like that kind of messaging on your merch you can support either by going to the website www.brokentraditions.com or you can become a channel member on the higher tier of the patreon also you see this hat right here it says thrive you know simple hats like that with just simple messaging on the side, you know, saying I think right here. So, oh man, I, you might not see it because of the headphones, but it's like the BT logo on the side. So simple messaging, simple shirts, simple impactful shirts like that that would get attention. I wore the Mom Wins the Lessons T-shirt to a car show, and people kept stopping me, asking me where I get it from, and proudly I said my own website. Also, if you guys are watching this on Rumble, Facebook, um, come across this on Instagram, TikTok whatever threads you know follow the movement of broken traditions i greatly appreciate you guys also if you guys are listening to this on apple Podcasts, iheart radio spotify youtube podcast amazon podcast follow the broken traditions podcast also leave a review let me know how you feel about this or if you don't leave a review you can email me email me laurent at broken traditions.com we don't accept anything less than a five-star review just kidding just leave what you how you feel about the episode right all feedback is 
uh, accepted. And speaking of feedback, I want to give a shout out to last week's episode comment. The comment of the week that get the BT bomb comes from KLMZB for PK, right? God, I need my glasses. I can't see that far. But the comment was about uh, Kamala Harris, the gift and the curse. And I was saying how Kamala Harris uh, is a gift and a curse. And we talked about Kamala Harris, if she's black or not on that last week's episode. If you guys didn't see it, I advise you guys to check it out. So let me read this comment coming from KLM ZB4PK. Kind of magnified it a little bit bigger so I could read it. So this comment says, I'll explain why she's not black. In the Western world, black is used by African Americans because of the laws of direct lineage to land. And he also put, I often question why white is used when they know their ancestry. For example, my partner is an Ethiopian woman. Nobody from a country in Africa who has melanin in their skin calls themselves black. They state the nation or ethnicity. With all that being said, fresh voice, <laughs> Kamala Harris does know her land of origin from both sides, grew up in Canada, and will be Indian slash Jamaican slash Irish slash Canadian American, <laughs> not black African American. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. I'm African American, by the way. So that comment was great. I love that comment. You get yourself a BT bomb. So there you go with the BT bomb. Also, last but not least, man, I want to also give a thanks to uh, NECA. NECA, I don't know your last new last name, so I'm sorry that I didn't get that. But also, congratulations on you know your union your that is beautiful i saw the pictures i saw the video congratulations uh contributed to the broken traditions with a super chat also corey joe contributed to broken traditions with a super chat during the premiere also shout out to logic and reason for purchases something for broken traditions uh broken traditions mug i don't even have a broken traditions mug so shout out to you guys for buying a broken traditions mug i need to get myself one Cause ain't no way you guys gonna have something of mine that i don't have right <laughs> shout out to the people who are watching this as a youtube premiere these episodes premiere weekly on youtube 2 p.m eastern standard time so you guys want to watch it in real time that's the time we do it and also i'm usually in the comments unless i have other prior engagement so this week i'm in the comments so shout out to everybody who's watching this as a youtube premiere let's talk about the people who were talking about kamala harris using Meg Thee Stallion and how Donald Trump used uh, Amber Rose, right? So this one tweet right here says, yeah, I got a problem with Megan performing, but Trump has supporters thinking Amber Rose was a rap rapper. I'm no Kamala fan. However, are we really mad about Megan Thee Stallion performance when it, it, Trump was walking out to many men and got hoes like Amber Rose giving a think piece at his rallies? We are all doomed. And doesn't Amber Rose have an OnlyFans? But Trump had her speak at a rally, which he didn't. But yeah, I'm mad about Megan. Please stop losing the plot. Like, oh my God. Megan is a rapper, a college graduate. Remember when you had a professional whore, Amber Rose, speak at your convention? Amber Rose and Megan Thee Stallion, right? Two women who got their fame, their influence, uh, I guess you could say through hip hop, right? Through the hip hop industry. So we're going to have a discussion about these two women. But before we have this discussion about these two women, we have to talk about who they are, right? So I'm not going to assume that you click this episode and understand who these two women are. So let's start with Amber Rose. Amber Rose was born in um, Philadelphia, 1983. Shout out to all the 80s babies. Mother from Africa, like Cape Verde, Africa. And I think her father may be like Italian, by the way, of Irish or something like that, right? Uh, Amber Rose was somebody who started dancing at the age of 15, right? When I say dancing, I'm not meaning like she became like a somebody who went to dance school, like dancing probably. Put it like this. It says she was dancing to help her family with money, right? So by the age of 15, Amber Rose been using her body for financial gain from dancing to modeling to modeling to a video vixen and if you guys don't know what a video vixen is it's basically like a a woman of beauty that was in rap videos right by that around that time we had like melissa ford around that time we had um buffy the body key toy johnson those are the women that was like in rap videos and king magazines that had these 
bodies. It's basically like flat stomachs and big butts, right? That's what they have, flat stomachs and big butts. And people love to see them in music videos. So Amber Rose was one of those people. So later on, she was in videos for like Jeezy. She was in videos for like um, Ludacris. She was in a video for the game featuring Kanye West. That's when she met Kanye West and she became Kanye West's girlfriend, right? So at that time now, she's really having this level of fame because she's the girlfriend to Kanye West. Like, who is this woman that Kanye West is walking around with? After they broke up, she got with uh, Wiz Khalifa, uh, had a baby with Wiz Khalifa. From Wiz Khalifa, she went to 21 Savage and she did acting, uh, reality TV, she did music. A whole bunch of different things right like once you get into that i guess that pocket of fame you have to find your niche on what works best for you for you to continuously to be relevant right so she was doing many different things like like the comment says she had only fans uh, only fans is a like a pay-per-view website that you can subscribe to to i uh, guess see explicit content of the person that you want to see right so you pay amber rose a directly monthly fee to see explicit content of amber rose so she had that also, Amber Rose um, was an advocate for, like, I guess, sex liberation. She had something that was called a slut walk. So Amber Rose had that. So that is Amber Rose claim to fame, right? Then we go with the Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion, right? Born 1995 in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, her father, from what I understand, was locked up and he got out of jail and had a relationship with Megan Thee Stallion until his untimely death. Then uh, Megan Thee Stallion mom was Megan Thee Stallion's manager when she started writing her own music, her close friend, her mentor. And, you know what I'm saying, she pushed Megan Thee Stallion to get into the music industry. And also, she encouraged Megan Thee Stallion to further her education. Like that comment said, you know, she's a college graduate. So Megan Thee Stallion also graduated college from Texas State University in 2021. Megan Pete. <laughs> But prior to her graduating college in 2021, in 2019, Megan Thee Stallion's mom also passed away from a brain tumor. And not to mention, Megan Thee Stallion was also famously known for being a part of a crazy shooting that when she got shot in the foot and when she went on Instagram Live and alleged that Tory Lane shot in the foot. I'm not going to let y'all keep playing in my face. And I'm not going to let this nigga keep playing in my face either. So... Since y'all hold so worried about it, yes, this nigga Tory shot me. You shot me. And you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs lying and shit. Stop lying. Why lie? Became a big trial. Tory Lanez actually got locked up for shooting Megan Stein in the foot. And I think... If I'm not mistaken, Tory Lanez is seeing 10 years for that. But I digress on Tory Lanez. But Megan Thee Stallion, 2019, lost her moms. 2020, got shot in the foot by Tory Lanez. 2021, she graduated college. So even do even through all that she had going on, she still accomplished that, right? So that's the background on those two women, right? So now let's speak about Amber Rose at the Republican National Convention, right? Gave a speech at the National Convention, right? Now, first, let's talk about the appearance. Amber Rose wore a dress, right? The dress covered up her body from the middle of her neck all the way down to her ankles. No skin was really shown except for her hands, right? And her head. She spoke about how the Republican Party became more welcoming once she started realizing the viewpoints of America, uh, Republicans. So this came from her father saying that he's a Trump supporter and she telling her father that Trump is a racist. So this is something I ask people too, right? It's not just her father doing this. I ask this the same question to people. If Trump is a racist, tell me what he said is racist. And people really don't have an answer. They just say that he's racist. Just a talking point. It's just a, a repeating talking point, right? Not saying I'm a Trump supporter, but if you saying that this man is racist, tell me how. Tell me how he's racist, right? And a lot of people cannot tell you that Trump is racist or they can't give you examples, or they give you, um, I guess, talking points that they heard and, and bypassing, right? 
So they never give you no real direct answers. So she says she's trying to find reasons that say that Trump is racist. She couldn't find it. And after that, she started becoming more quote unquote MAGA. And she started to now represent the Republican Party. Right. So she kind of like fell off the scene for a bit when she was going through all that stuff, like reality TV and like I said, OnlyFans and things of that nature. Then she popped up with a MAGA rapper, right? This is a subgenre of rap called like MAGA rap. So a MAGA rapper named 4G out of below. Donald Trump, baby. Donald Trump, baby. America needs saving. America needs saving. We vote. The next thing you know, she's on the Republican National Convention. So Amber Rose did her research and start realizing that perhaps in her viewpoint, in her research, that this political party is best sit, best suited for her future and her child's future. And she felt like this party, this is her word. She felt like this party is more inclusive. This party don't care about what you went through, but also they appreciate that you're now trying to make a change and you want to become something different. So this party, as she says, it don't care if you gay, black, white, whatever. Realize Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. They don't care about those things as long as you American first. American first, you have American values. You want to be a part of this country. That's what this party's about, according to Amber Rose. She gave that speech. She gave a personal experience of why she supports Donald Trump. So if you are a person who perhaps got caught up into the whirlwind, right, of entertainment, um, sex working, all that type of stuff, and you turn your life around, this is, could be a direction for you, right? I mean, this is not uncommon that women in entertainment is doing this, right? We had Black China, you know, saying she gave her life to Christianity. Recently, I'm um, seeing posts about Brittany Renner who now is um, converting to Islam. So this is not uncommon. This is not uncommon at all that women who went through these type of things now starting to find a different direction. Now coming out of things and want guidance and want to be led into a different direction. So Amber Rose is speaking to those people. Amber Rose is very relatable to those people on these things could be done under this administration. Very clear, concise reasoning on what could be done. There was no rapping. There was no twerking. There was nothing of that nature. So when Amber Rose did that speech, that speech to me showed, you know what? I did my research. I can't find nothing wrong with it. And as a matter of fact, I did my research. I see that this is a better situation for me. That's what Amber Rose represented. Now, say what you want with that. But that's what I took away when I seen Amber Rose. Now, let's go to Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion did a performance at a Kamala Harris rally, right? She came out, performed these songs. Songs were vulgar. Songs was nasty lyrics. So nasty that a lot of times she was just standing there dancing because the lyrics of the song was not suited for the situation and event that she was at. So she couldn't say the lyrics. I guess the lyrics are so bad, there wasn't even a clean version of saying it in front of these people, right? Megan Thee Stallion was dressed pretty modest for a Megan Thee Stallion event, right? She had on pants, she had on a crop top, and she had on sleeves, right? So she was dressed pretty modest, but she wasn't dressed as modest as Amber Rose, since we're going to compare the two. So she was dressed pretty modest, but she's performing these songs, and after performing these songs, or during the performing these songs, she gave a little twerk. Well, people seen this, and rightfully so, people felt a level of disrespect. Like, damn, this is how this administration sees me as a black woman. Or this is how this administration sees me. Instead of giving me information, or instead of giving me examples of how your viewpoint is now seen maybe a better direction for me like Amber Rose did, right? She gave her viewpoints on how this administration is going to be better for her and her children. Instead of giving me information, you gave me entertainment. I don't need entertainment. I don't need to see Megan Thee Stallion doing that. 
This is where the Democrats and Kamala Harris campaign dropped the ball. So I mentioned that Meg Thee Stallion's father was locked up and she only had a certain amount of years with her father, right? I mentioned that. So now, why not use that situation to talk about opportunities that could be done in inner cities for people not to get into the life of crime and get locked up and be separated from their families? Take it to another level. Meg Thee Stallion graduated with a bachelor's in health administration. Also, Meg Thee Stallion's mom unfortunately passed away from a brain tumor in 2019. Why not speak about health care? Why not speak about the importance of health care? Why not speak about the importance of being healthy? Not to mention Meg Thee Stallion also have a partnership with Planet Fitness. Not to mention Meg Thee Stallion also have a partnership with Nike. So Meg Thee Stallion show you videos of her working out. Meg Thee Stallion is one of the rare rappers in entertainment, especially at the level that she's at, without her body done. She shows that she works out. And you look at her body, you could tell that Meg Thee Stallion works out. So Meg Thee Stallion works out, got a partnership with Nike, a partnership with Planet Fitness, got a bachelor's in health administration. Why the conversation was not about health on how we need to be healthier. Or you want to bring it to health administration, you could have the conversation about reproductive rights. Or instead, this campaign used you to twerk on stage. Shout out to Take Heed to the Message. She said something that was so profound. Check this out. Because as you being the elder woman, because you're the elder woman, we're supposed to protect the younger black women. I'm just saying, right? That's what we're supposed to do, right? But I believe you pimped her, Kamala. I believe you pimped her. That's what I believe. I believe you pimped her. And we always think it's okay to pimp the younger ones. So my problem is, is that this is what we think that's okay. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, she just did a show, she just did a show. But the symbolism of this nonsense. We are designated as the world whore. Can you imagine? Black women, that's what you are. We are the go-to world's whore. Kamala Harris pimped you. I'm going to leave Take Heed to the Message YouTube in the show notes so you guys can check out her channel. Great content. Go live every day. She's consistent with it. Shout out to Take Heed to the Message. You let this campaign pimp you out. You have so much more to offer. We could keep going down the line. We talked about opportunities in the city so people won't be out there doing crime. We talked about health care. We talked about maybe reproductive rights. Why not talk about domestic violence? You went through a domestic violence situation with Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez was found guilty on the charges of shooting you in the foot. Perhaps you don't want to go back to it, but... That still could have been a conversation to have about domestic violence. I think using that as a conversation is better than, quote unquote, popping it for Kamala, as you put it. You let these people use you. Now, the appearance of you, this stain of your accomplishments is going to be known because you wanted to pop it for Kamala. How did the Kamala Harris campaign team see what Amber Rose did and thought it had been a good idea to do what Megan Thee Stallion did, even though Megan Thee Stallion had way more things to talk about than Amber Rose? If Meg Thee Stallion did something close to what Amber Rose did, it would have been more impactful. But instead, you use Meg Thee Stallion to pop it for Kamala, as she puts it. Right? I was popping it for Kamala. Right? That's what she said. I was popping it for Kamala. She put out there said, I'm popping it for Kamala. You use that woman to do that, and it backfired. It backfired to the point that there are some people now saying they can't, they can't support Kamala Harris. We'll see what happened in November if that things change, if the Harris administration makes some changes. But people are now backing away from this. 
they're now backing away from this. And what the Republican National Convention showed that this is not the same old white man convention. This is not that no more. This is now a party of inclusivity. We included everybody. We included a woman like Amber Rose, even though there was some Republicans upset about it. We are re we are accepting women like Amber Rose. We are accepting black men, black women, um, gay men, gay women. We're accepting this. All we want is a great country. And the message you put out there with Meg Thee Stallion, a college graduate, a woman who's an accomplished rapper, the message you put out there is popping it for Kamala. <laughs> The it's a slap in the face. It's a slap in the face, and everybody's seen it as a slap in the face. You can't sugarcoat it. You can't make it any better. You can't say that this is the way that the direction is going. No, you can't do it. Everybody's seen what it was. So I want to close on this, man. So these two comparisons about Amber Rose and Megan Thee Stallion, it says a lot about the current state of black culture and political engagement. I'm sorry, the, the Democrats, they dropped the ball on this. And if they don't course correct this, it's going to be a bad look because people are no longer just going with the entertainer. People are now going with stories like Amber Rose. People who were on the fence and heard Amber Rose speak and see the level of inclusivity perhaps will go over to the Republican side. People who were supportive of Kamala Harris and Meg Thee Stallion, you didn't sway them, but you did push people away. You pushed people away who was on the fence. Amber Rose didn't push people away that was on the fence. You pushed people away that's on the fence. Let me know how you guys feel about this, man. I feel like this was a bad look on the Harris campaign. I feel like people who wanted to make that comparison to Amber Rose, you open up a can of worms for discussions like this. Y'all open this up. Y'all wanted to have the what about isms. Y'all wanted to have the, but y'all had this, y'all had that. They, you have to admit when somebody you like dropped the ball. If Kamala Harris and Meg Thee Stallion dropped the ball, you have to admit it. And I'm not even, I'm putting more on Kamala Harris and her campaign than Meg Thee Stallion. Everybody's upset at, at Meg for doing what she, she was paid to do. And that's, you know, let's shake that big, big mother chocolate, beautiful hers. Now, um, Stop getting mad at her. Get mad at the mother who hired her. Now, who hired her? She thinks she think this is what black women want to see at a mother political rally. That's why she hired her. She's trying to fill up the venue, which she did because it's a free concert, sold that for free. You know what I mean? And then I heard after Meg got done, mother leaving. They ain't even, you know, want to stay for here, McCalla, McCalla, whatever the name is. The VP. That Meg this time ain't got paid to do a gig. She got paid to do a gig, and she did her gig. You know what I'm saying? Megan Stallion is already pro-Democrat. As you can see right here with this image of Megan Stallion with the Clintons. She's already pro-Democrat. She already put her line in the sand. If you came to Megan Stallion and said, yo, Meg, we need you to speak about what greatness that Kamala Harris is, I think she would have knocked it out the park. But instead, you use her as a whore because you pimped her out. Shout out to take heed to the message. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments, man. I appreciate the time. All right, man. Till next time. Peace. Real rap. Ron is signing up. All right. Later. One.